best podcast in the business. The name is Show Me The Money. Welcome back to the Show Me The Money podcast. Normally, I would say I am here with Gilbert Burns and Anato Moicano, but they're renegotiating their contracts <laughs> right now. They said they want more money. So I said, you know what? I don't need you guys today. I'm bringing in two, two other people. We don't need you for the episode. No, I'm just kidding. Renato and Gilbert are training hard for their fights. They're taking the week off, but we brought in two absolute legends, one this weekend that Slapped on the card. <laughs> Jerk is through Plessy Moneyline. Round four, submission, all sorts of stuff. Hey, Jive Picks. And another guest that was with us last week and was with us this weekend sweating out the fights, Jason Anik. Both of you guys, welcome to the show. Dude, great hit. Well, and I'm going to look at my camera this week, right? Like, subscribe, show me the money. <laughs> and for those of you who join us, I'm sorry two weeks in a row you get me instead of Hinato Moicano. I'm sorry. Just forgive me, but he'll be back. He's hopefully going to win his fight. I guess he can't lose, apparently. But hey, <laughs> talk about your night, man. Whack, whack. In the wise words of Hanato Moicano, I could not afford to lose that night <laughs> because everything was on the line. I had the the public bet, biggest public bet of my life on Drinkers Duplessis. And uh, finally, you know, I guess we got to hit a 42 to 1 prop for Maddie to bring me on the podcast. <laughs> uh, but so, yeah, we cashed out together. Drinkers got it done. And all is good in the world. And all is good. You also had the first fight of the night. I think the guy by sub. It's like, I'm sitting there with these guys who are definitely <laughs> sharp handicappers, right? <laughs> sitting on a ticket with the first guy at night to hand, you know, sub. I'm impressed, man. I enjoyed it. Bro, yeah. I put that first, the first fight of the night. I didn't even have that on my card. I was like, what am I doing in the first fight? Fight is about to start. I was panicking because I didn't have action. I looked at Hayden and he's like, sub. I'm like, <laughs> it's in. And I ended up hitting like eight grand on the first fight. But it was a roller coaster. The night started like this, then I went like this, then this, and then the main event brought me back because I lost on Ga I lost on Gamrot. Which, by the way, everyone saying that like Gamrot lost a bad decision. Like I bet on Gamrot, and I think Hooker won that fight on damage, two rounds to one. A lot of people on social think Gamrot won a decision. I can see how you could have it either way, but you can't say it was a robbery. Totally agree. You definitely can't say it was a robbery. Totally agree. So I, I think uh, I think Gamrot. Had to do more in that fight. I think Dan Hooker, credit to him, looked very good. Tatted Dan Hooker, undefeated in the UFC now. Do Bronx era, Who man. do you want to see for him next? Charles Oliveira? Charles. I mean, you want to see Charles? Charles, no doubt. No doubt. What would you bet Charles, on that fight? Tommy Charles would sub him. Uh, but, yeah. you know, Charles is on the, he's coming off the loss. So, you know, yeah. how is he going to bounce back for that? He's had his run. Maybe this is Do Bronx, or uh, this is Hooker's Do Bronx run. Because, like, he's had the resurgence. That's true. That's true. You know, true. he's got the blonde hair, the tats. How old is Hooker now? 30. I don't think he's that old. Like, 34? Yeah, 33, 34? Yeah. You know, I just worry about his durability to go on that type of run. Yeah, but the fact that we're even having a conversation about yeah, Oliveira yeah. being next for Dan Hooker, it's yeah. unbelievable, man. And, you know, whether it's the Dan Hooker, Gamrot fight, or you talk about Steve Ersig, Kai Car France, right? I said to my brother, John, I'm like, did... Do you find anyone in Australia, boots on the ground, that liked Kai Kara fronts? Did you guys find any handicappers? No. And, and I know I'm no. shifting away, but it's like, man, you got these Dan Hookers. You know, what's Gamrot? Minus 400? Well, yeah. doesn't win. And now we're talking about Dan Hooker instead of Gamrot. Gamrot, we're not in a two-year setback yeah. to the title shot. And I had, so I had Steve Ersig uh, by submission in the fight. I also had his money line. I just thought he would grapple in that fight. Like, He's better everywhere, in my opinion. So I didn't think he necessarily needed the grapple. Obviously, hindsight, he definitely needed the grapple. Um, but I thought that was Kai Carr France's one path was a big knockout shot. And, man, he got it. He he absolutely got it. I think there was, like, a, a part of me that was like, oh, I could have let that fight go on just a little bit more. I don't want to say it was, like, a ridiculously bad stoppage by any means. But I think Ursay could have maybe recovered there. Maybe that was the bias talking. But uh, credit to Kai Carr France. Credit to Dan Hooker. And credit to City Kickboxing, two and one in the night. Going into the main event, I was nervous as shit because I, like, <laughs> I was like, damn, City Kickboxing's about to sleep. Ugh. My night's going to end horribly. But what did you guys make of the main event? Because I thought Izzy looked really good, especially early. You guys fed me a lot of Casamigos tequila. So, I, you know, <laughs> it was a little bit of a choppy few yeah. rounds for me. Um, 
But frankly, a lot of it sort of panned out how I thought it would to an extent. I, yeah. You made a great point about Izzy sort of closing the distance and not sort of stepping back like he did with Strickland. But for me, it just was ultimately going to come down to DDP. And I said last week on the show, we were talking about the fight and they said to me, biggest bet of your life. And that moved the needle for me, bro. Yeah. You've been hot, whether it's PFL or, you know, so that moved the needle a lot for me. So sitting there with you guys, I felt like you guys had faith yeah. where maybe I, would, as it was playing out, where I was starting to get a little nervous. Yeah, I, I think it went exactly how I thought it would too. Yeah. Like, if you look at Izzy, his past opponents would not jump on the opportunities that Drake has had to where he's he's beating him up against the cage. Good point. Drags him down to the ground, has the ability to go up and snatch the neck. Who else is doing that? You know, yeah. like Marvin Vittori's not doing that. Uh, right. Robert Whitaker, actually, I posted a video on this too earlier in the week about how Drake could get the takedowns. And in, in one of those clips, Robert Whitaker took him down and took his back right away. And then he just fell off because he didn't have the strength to get him down to the ground mm -hmm. and keep him on the ground, nor does he have the pace to tire Izzy out. So it went exactly how I thought it would. And I think a lot of people were watching that thinking, oh, this is Izzy all day. This is Izzy masterclass. I've seen that everywhere. But like mm -hmm. he was up two rounds to one on two of the judges' scorecards. So he's arguably up two to one and then winning the fourth round. So I think Driggis did exactly what he needed to do. Did, you, did either of you see him talk about his game plan? No. About how he knew that Adesanya wanted to be aggressive. So he, at the beginning of the round, he would kind of take a step back, allow him to be aggressive to where, yeah, kicks. to where he's, he's tiring himself out because he's not used to fighting that way. Huh. And then later in the rounds, he put the pressure on. No, that's smart. So what did I say stuff. last episode? I said, like, I really believe Drick is, like, he implements really smart game plans, and that's also a credit to his, his corner and his coaching, um, but he's just a high-intellect guy. No doubt. And and now, what's he got? Scalp, Strickland, Whitaker, Adesanya. I mean, what else are you looking for for yeah. your middleweight, you know, for, so for I'm guys? I'm glad you said that because I want to yeah. ask both of you. I'm going to I'm gonna name Drickus and another fighter. I want to see who you would pick first gut instinct. Drickus, Hamzat. Go. Hamzat. Drickus. I'm Drickus, bro. I think if I think if Hamzat doesn't get him early, I just don't think Hamzat's gonna be able to like. I, I he can get some takedowns early, maybe. But Hamza can he hold gassed. him down? He's gonna gas himself doing that. I think. So. Well, you know, maybe if you had said Hamzat's name first, but when I hear the name Hamzat, I'm so fucking anxious to see that dude fight. I but I don't lot. love that the, the car, I, I think the cardio is gonna continue to be a concern. Whereas I think yeah. Duplessis starting to improve the cardio. But you hear about Duplessis talking about being the hardest worker in the room and now trying to after becoming champion, trying to continue to prove to be the hardest worker in the room. Reminds yeah. me of my boy Bilal Muhammad, right? It's like, <laughs> let's go. Let's, let's talk about Bilal real quick before we move on because I want to talk about two more fights on this past weekend and then let's talk about this up this upcoming week's card. But we didn't even give you the chance last week. Ah. So I got to give you the chance now. Let's 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 hear your thoughts on everything going on with Bilal right now because he's kind of, in my opinion, doing a really good job of leaning into the villain role. Right? Well, <laughs> you've, you've said, you said he needs to go full heel. Oh, I, I love every second of it, bro. I but for it. those of you who don't know, I've been hosting a podcast with Bilal Muhammad called Remember the Show on the Anakin Florian podcast since September 2020. I didn't know who he was when we started the show, which I admitted a couple months ago. He wasn't happy about that. <laughs> but let's put some respect on my boy, right? 11 straight fights unbeaten, right? And I've said this over and over again, but no one was putting respect on that 10 fight unbeaten streak. You could be sure Bilal wasn't sniffing the pound for pound list. And I just wish luck to all his next opponents, right? We're going to talk about Shavkat Rachmanov. We talk about whether Ian Gary, whoever's next. Bilal Muhammad's the problem. Strap him up. I can't get enough. You know, we were a little bit moved away. But what I said to Bilal, it's like, it's not a joke. Like I wake up every day and then it occurs to me and it's like it, i will say he's a close friend of mine so it occurs to me he's champ and all of a sudden i can't get enough so for me so proud of my boy i know we're a little bit removed from it but i'm really looking forward to him defending he wants yeah. to be active and yeah he i think they wanted to maybe turn him around a little bit sooner but you need to hold on to that for a little bit get oh, yeah. that nose healed up i do think shavkot will be next hopefully november or december but um mm. my boy will be ready bro if they give me a good plus money number on balau here against shavkot He'll be the underdog, they right? Won't, yeah, he's, he's got to be. Yeah, because Definitely. they're they're not gonna dare put a plus money number on Shavkat only because when you look at his record and his finishing percentage, yeah. right? So what's he seventeen and zero all finishes? Mm -hmm. I don't think odds makers are gonna be like we're not making. I think odds makers are gonna be like we're not making that guy an underdog who finished every person he's ever fought, right? But I love that because I don't see 
Shavkat getting takedowns against Bilal. So unless he catches him on the feet, I don't think he's going to beat him. And I think Bilal's going to be able to outvolume him and stay in his face and keep the pressure going. It's going to be a hell of a fight. I agree that should be the fight next. I wouldn't hate it if it was the Kamar Usman fight, but I think the USC is going to make the Shavkat fight. I agree. And, you know, Usman has lost three straight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think yeah. it's tough to, you know, regardless of his yeah. history. But 100%. Yeah. All right, well, two more fights I want to cover. That was a little bit earlier on the card last week, and then we'll move on to to, to look ahead and do some picks for this weekend. Um, on the pr- or No, Carlos Prates. We got to talk about this dude right now. Because I'll tell you what, I would take this dude up against anybody right now. Like, unless you were an elite grappler, who's beating this guy? Bro, who's you guys both had guy? action on him, right? Yeah. We both, it's a celebration in the we room. We both yeah. crushed on him. Now, he's nasty. I will say, I went a little degen mode and I did sprinkle on the submission. <laughs> but to be fair, when he was piecing Leach up, he should have <laughs> shot the takedown at some point, bro. Leach was back up against the cage, just getting pieced up. I really thought he was going to shoot and that would have been live. So, but we still, I still won the inside the distance bet on him. Carlos Prates, this dude just smokes everyone like it's his cigarette, bro. He just he kills everybody in that <laughs> octagon. Three knockdowns in the first round. Leach still comes forward. And you know what I noticed about that fight is and this was kind of going around social media. But you notice how Prates could have like TKO'd him, but he waited for him to recover yeah. just so he could knock him out. That was the most badass thing I've ever seen, bro. bro. <laughs> it's crazy how like patient he is and how accurate he is. Like yeah. he will just sit there, oh, pick yeah. his shots Sniper. so accurate. I posted on uh, on my ex. The dude's got like over six walk off KOs. You look at his career when he puts dudes out. He's not like TKO. He just yeah. puts them out with one punch. Doesn't follow it up at all. Like he knows they're out out. Even Amazing. if it's a body shot, like against Radke. The need of the yeah, body, yeah. he's gone. Yeah. You look on the regional scene too, like he had a, a body shot with the, the fist, just walks it off. It's like, I don't understand how he is able to be that precise, doesn't get hit all that often. And I think the the sky's the limit. Like you match up him against like Ian Gary, who do you take? It's a great fight. I take So I think Ian will try to grapple. That's a, there's not many fights that Ian will try to grapple. We saw one. Right in his yep. last fight against MVP, I think that's another fight he would grapple because I don't think there's a question who's has better hands and power. Like Ian, you could say has the kicks, and maybe you could say he's the better overall well-rounded striker. But I don't even think you can say that, you know. So like, I think I, I'm taking Carlos Prates. He's going to be dog money in that fight. I would hammer that. I'm taking him against anyone in a pure striking match. Well, you know, and and to your point, right about you know, I love that fight, but with Ian Gary, it's like he's been so selective with, and they've the way they've matched him up. Even that mm-hmm. MVP fight, I was actually somewhat surprised because I thought it was the most dangerous matchup he had taken. You look at Bo Nickel, the way they sort of build up some of these guys, where it's yeah. it's real careful in certain yeah. ways. You know, it'll Prat never just, happen. Yeah, I, mean, I, I know. Well, title, that's sort of where I'm yeah, going. But uh, yeah. yeah, I was just looking at the rankings. Like, so is he entering? What's I think his, his next fight will probably be for uh, against a ranked opponent. Yeah. yeah. He should be entering the top 15. I mean, that's just crazy. He's not. Yeah. So I'm looking at the top 15 I right now. Well, I know we're going to get to this weekend, but Michael Morales, if he takes care of Neil yeah. Magny, you know, that might be a good fight. Morales. That, that could be Fuck a good it. fight. There's Vicente Luque, MVP, Kevin Holland. Oh, man. Give him Joaquin Buckley. Yeah. <laughs> Give him Buckley. Or he'll snipe Buckley. Is Buckley fighting, uh, fighting Wonderboy? Wonder Boy, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. after that. <laughs> after that. <laughs> so we'll see. All right. One more fight I got to talk on because it's a little bit controversial, but I'm not complaining because we cash big on it. Johnny Walker's brother. Let's go. With the submission <laughs> win. Now, I did need the KO prop too, but we did win on the money line. He was one of my, he was. I think he was my dog of the week. Um, yep. Was he home of fight picks dog? No, no, I don't we think had, so. We, we had him. You had him, right? Yeah, I had him too. Yeah, we had him. Which, by the way, if you guys want to get access to Hayden and Nolan's picks, fuck it. We're going to give away seven days for free right now. Use code show me on Home of Fight Picks. We'll put it in the bio. You guys can get Hayden and Nolan's picks for free. Zero dollars for seven days straight. That means you're going to get it for this weekend's card on Saturday. They've been as hot as anyone I've seen in the industry the past few months. So jump on that right now. We'll drop that in the description. But this weekend's card is going to be electric. I'm going back to Walker here. So Walker gets that sub in the first round. But to what a lot of MMA fans didn't understand, if you scream as you're getting, you know, submitted, that's a verbal submission. So I guess most people on X or on social media 
didn't like that. You want to, you wouldn't imagine, you couldn't imagine how many peasants DM me saying I got lucky on that fight. <laughs> <laughs> peasants. So, <laughs> so keyboard warrior, peasants, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want to say these days. So people get so mad. I had a guy at a, uh, the, the PFL fights that came up to me and he, he, he walks right up to me. He's like, yo, you're Maddie Betts, right? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, you put me on your Instagram story calling me a peasant. <laughs> I was like, bro, I want to shake your hand because most people wouldn't come up to me and, and approach me. And I was like, I respect that. And I was like, I want you to know I call all my friends peasants. Don't take it personally. So it was just funny. And he's like, what do you think? You think I'm a peasant in person? Uh, he's like, I'm kind of big, aren't I? And I was like, yeah, you got some good size, bro. You're eight good. Eight two thirty. It was. I was like, yeah, you're not two thirty. It was so funny though. He's he's actually a nice guy. But all right, let's move on to to this weekend's card. Not the greatest card on the world, but there's some good fights that I'm actually looking forward to here. And we'll go. We'll, we'll pretty much just break down the main card. Which, by the way, we did just barely miss on the Fliff parlay last week. So now our record on the show, we are. I think we did right. Oh, yeah. Well, I you had Walker, I had DDP. Who did? Uh, that was the underdog parlay. I think one of us had Steve Urseg, didn't we? That no. Uh, Gilbert had Urseg in the the show parlay. I had the fight to be inside the distance, you which won hit, that. and then you hit. Oh, so Gilbert had Urseg. Gilbert had Urseg. So that's the whole world had Urseg. I had a lot. I had a, I yeah, Urseg yeah, really. So, uh, so we really lost fucked on me. Urseg. I gave a dog play. You gave a minus one fifty play. Right. Gilbert gave the chalk and we lost, but the, Gilbert ate the chalk. Gilbert's got to pick dogs. He's a machine at picking underdogs. I'm, a, I think moving forward we're gonna be like Gilbert, pick your favorite dog, because that'll give the parlay a good bit of ju- like some 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 good money to it, some good plus money to it. So all right, well by the end of this show we will be picking a three leg parlay on Fliff. Oh no, last last week I had I had Team Vasa. <laughs> Who took Alex Reyes? No, no, that wasn't no, that was that wasn't the parlay. That was the long. That shot. That was the long oh, shot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's the parlay. I had Walker. Jason had fight to not go the distance. That was a very sharp pick. And then Gilbert had Steve Ersig. So, bro, the good news is Jason won, I won, and Hayden's hot. So the exactly. three of us today, we're about to feed you guys a three-legger that's going to smack this weekend. So let's go up the card here. We'll start with the main card. Um, I want to start on, let's see. Let's start with Shabazian versus GM3. This is a very interesting matchup, right? Because Edmund Shabazian undefeated till he lost to Derek Brunson. He's since been two, two and three in the UFC. He did just win on a knockout performance against AJ Dobson. Now, wrestling has been kind of his issue here, right? 63% takedown defense. Not the worst in the world, but GM3, a guy with 28 submissions, 10 in the UFC. <laughs> GM3 is a live dog here, in my opinion. Plus 245 on Fliff. Edmund is minus 365 as the favorite here. What do you guys like in this fight? I'll start, I'll start with Hayden here. I think I like my boy GM3, uh, especially at the odds because, yeah. you know, Shabazi is minus 365, but he has a very questionable gas tank yeah. and pretty poor takedown defense, pretty poor submission defense. I mean, he's never been submitted, I don't believe, but he's a guy that gets put on his back and takes damage. Uh, so that's not Good so what am I hearing? Am I hearing a uh, a GM three knockout prop? That is possible. I you actually tagged for a Silva, yeah, bro. Have, yeah, with uh, the knockdown, you know, like a that ground pay pound, huge. TKO type of thing late uh, round two three. That would probably pay. I love the than round DDT two. Round the four. round two three interests me. Just the round prop, not KO yeah. sub. Just you know, mm. survive early against this guy. Wear him down a little bit and then finish him in round two, three. What do you think? I absolutely love Gerald Mershart, the third, my boy. No, and, and I think this is like the wheelhouse for the price. I love Gerald in this spot. Shabazian, to me, eh, you know, I'm not necessarily looking to back him, but I would ask yeah. you, does the line, you know, Mershart, I feel like it's, there's never a time where he's less than a two to one underdog. Honestly, it feels like yeah. almost never. Yeah. So do you think the line makes sense? I mean, I don't know. I mean, when I see big favorites like this and it's like a guy that's dangerous early, like a Shabazian, it kind of makes sense because you're yeah. like, you're betting on him to get a, a first round finish. And then after yeah. that, the live odds will change and, and everything because, you know, you're betting that Mearshart's going to get yeah. knocked out on round in round one. So, so you'll have Shabazi in round one, Mershart rounds two, three, Man, right? That's All what I did in the, in, in the Jenkins versus Burns fight. I was like, yeah, I'm taking Herbert early. Take in my full card at Jenkins two, three. I mean, I just play the numbers, you know. And Herbert looked good early. And I was rooting for Herbert for obvious reasons. 
A, the, the upside and the long shot was massive, and then B, Gilbert on the show. So always rooting for, for the Burns brothers. But at the end of the day, I'm betting value on fights. When I see numbers, a lot of people ask me, like, why do you bet both sides of the fight? I'm like, I only have to hit one bet out of two or three bets <laughs> right. to yeah. make a lot of money. So a lot of times I will play both sides here. Yeah, I mean, look, Edmund is what? How many round one finishes in the UFC? One, yeah. two, three, four. He is five round one finishes in the UFC with his most, most recent being in March of this year. Um, I will say he did almost survive or almost go the distance with Anthony Hernandez, and I think very highly of Anthony mm-hmm. Hernandez, but Hernandez was ragged on him. Six takedowns to one, 63 significant strikes to 30. Um so I kind of am leaning. I, I almost feel like uh GM3 decision here could be in the, in the scorecards. You know, just outwork them rounds two, three. I'm, I'm leaning dog money line right now, but I don't know exactly how I'm going to play it. I'm not sure we'll have this one in the parlay or not, but uh, I think GM3 is a good dog pick. I love it. All right, let's move on to the next one here. We have Neil Magny versus Michael Morales. This one's very interesting because... <laughs> Neil Magny coming back from that comeback <laughs> round three win over Mike Malott. Oh, my God, bro. He kind of just out-veteraned him, out-dogged him, survived, did what Neil Magny is able to do. 37 years old, veteran of the UFC. But, Michael, this is a tall task because Morales is, is undefeated, 11 wins by knockout. But Neil Magny is not an easy guy to knock out. No. Like, you know, so what do you guys like here? I'm going I'm to go to Jason first. So I said about Neil Magny last fight when he beat uh, Mike Malott in Canada. That was, I think, UFC 297 in Toronto. I was like, you know, yeah, he's he's the gatekeeper, but he's fucking standing in front of the gate and not letting anyone in at times, you know, yeah. Neil Magny, right? So to me, I just think Morales is too big a challenge unless Magny can sort of survive early on. But Morales has spent some time in Chicago working with Bilal Muhammad. He's only, I just think he's a huge problem. There's a reason why this line, I mean, look, is it minus 1105? Is that current? I mean, it's it was minus... It was Uh, minus 700, I think, early this morning, went up to 800. So to me, there's a reason why that's coming in. Um, But, you know, Magny, if if this fight, you know, if Morales doesn't get him out of there in a round and a half, Mm -hmm. I do think it will start to turn a little bit. But uh, to me, Morales all day long here. Yeah, it's Morales all day. But it's just the bad thing with Magny is he doesn't really present any danger. Like on the feet, he doesn't have any type of power. Uh, He's a guy that really gets wins tiring you out based on holding right. you up against the cage. And I don't think Morales' gas tank is bad at all. And he's a physical dude. So I don't think Magny's And he has wrestling in his about. back pocket too. Yeah. He's like apparently an elite wrestler. I mean, I haven't really seen much of it. Yeah. He's, what is he from? Like Ecuador or something like that? Yeah. That's why Pretty I was yep. like, when I saw Let this, I saw what Gilbert did the Magni in round one. And I was like, wait a second. This guy's got wrestling. Can he pull a sub out here? Yeah. Oh, like That's what I was, I was thinking. Maybe a sub or, or most likely a decision. Just well, let's look Magny's at Neil solid. Magny's. So let's look at Neil Magny's topology here because, again, he's a hard guy to put away. Twenty-two um, and ten in the UFC, man, that's not yeah, bad. Yeah. Well, so two losses by knockout in his entire MMA career, but six by submission. Hmm. And then when it goes the distance, he's seventeen and three. So, wow. You know, if you're not finishing Neil Magny by <laughs> sub, you're probably not beating him more times than not. Yeah. So, like. You know, I think Morales, I would maybe look at a round one, two here. I think round one, two finish. I don't know what those numbers are going to look like. They, round one might even be, I think it would be minus money, or maybe even money. Bro, yeah. yeah I think, yeah, you minus. Don't think? I don't think so. I think the over under is probably going to be set at two and a half and probably around even money. I don't know what it is right now, but that's just what I'm guessing. Just based on Morales' last couple fights, he's going yeah. to decision. Well, Matthews and Griffin. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I guess so. He, but he has a, a good bit of round one and twos prior to the Adam Fugit fight. So Trevin Giles and yeah, I mean the thing is about Morales is he's not like he don't like he don't not try to get people out yeah. of there early. It's very calculated. He's very, That's yeah. why I think yeah he wins this fight probably by decision. Yeah, yeah. he knows what Magny's gonna bring to him, and he's just gonna. I think jab his I think round two. The round two. I just saw. I just saw it in my head. Round two. Uh, Stop, doctor stoppage or <laughs> or ref stoppage <laughs> round two stoppage because the ref's gonna just see too much he's like you know man he's too tough for his own good he's gonna take too much damage round one's gonna be i think round one's gonna be michael morales like you know calculating his, like just downloading data 
And then round two, he just, you know, too much, too much accumulation of damage puts him away. Yeah, I agree. I mean, but hey, don't you think there's some value if you like, I mean, Morales by decision, maybe? I mean, I think you'd yeah. see good plus money there. We gotta there, see the number. Depends yeah. what it is. Yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll wait and see what that, that comes up later in the week. So remember, guys, we're filming this on a Tuesday. Um, so we'll see what that is later on the week here. So uh, let's move on to a very good fight here. Angela Hill versus Tabitha Ricci. You guys know I love me some Tabitha Ricci. I've been on her so many times. She's very well-rounded. Why do you like her? <laughs> For multiple <laughs> reasons. I will say one thing. Angela Hill impressed the shit out of me in her last fight, bro. And I might have to go against my girl Tabitha here. I'm starting to see some line movement. I think it was around a pick em. Yep. I, I see that Angela Hill is, I think, becoming... I think we're going to see her around minus 150 by Saturday. I really, really believe so. Only because of how good her performance was last week. Her grappling looks so good. And I don't know how much Tabitha Ricci is going to have for her on the feet here. Man, this is a tough fight, man. I, I know Angela. I know both of them, right? And Tabitha yeah. Ricci, Callum, Callum Walsh, King Callum Walsh, the boxer, who yeah, is yeah. Her boyfriend, girlfriend, right? Mm -hmm. So she, they've been around. I've done some work with him on Fight Pass, right? And for me, right? I, I don't like betting on fighters that are older versus fighters that are younger ever. Yeah. So to me, Tabitha Ricci, she's won five of six. She's going in a different direction. It was a close fight last time out against Tisha Pennington. Gets yeah. the split decision. But I love Angela Hill, and I think she's so solid everywhere. I think her record is a little bit skewed. I think she's lost some tough split decisions. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she has T-shirts out. But it's bitch fucking season. Like, she is a <laughs> dog. Right. You know she what really I mean? So, so I don't want to <laughs> bet against her. I don't want to pick against her. However... Yeah. I like Ricci in this spot because I think she's climbing up the mountain. Really? And I hate to say it about my girl, Angela Hill, but I yeah. don't necessarily think she's still peaking. I think women's MMA is different for age, age gap. That's fair. That's fair. You don't take as big a shots. Uh, you don't usually rely on your physicality as much. Um, yeah. And your fair. speed, you know, like speed is you know, a 38 year old man compared to a 28 year old guy. It's different with yeah. women. I think it's, it's a little bit more wiggle room. And I think Hill's probably in the, the best shape of her of oh, her life. Uh, she's on, you know, got a lot of momentum coming into this fight too. And I think she's the better fighter. I really do. But I just yeah. The one thing to hold me off on her is that the judges love themselves some Tabitha Ricci. That's a great <laughs> point. For some reason. And the know, judges love don't her. love themselves some Angela Hill. Yeah, you know? That, I mean, I actually looked and, and Angela Hill is 0-4 in the UFC when it comes down to split decisions. And I see this one mm. coming down. The the There's over two and a half is like minus five hundred. So it's going to a decision. And then the judges. This fight, yeah, because because Ricci's not going to get subbed, obviously, by no. Angela. And Angela's grappling defense and grappling in general looks so good that I don't think Ricci's going to sub her either. I think this fight plays out on the feet here. If you do MMA math, which I know you're not supposed to, Angela Hill beat Luby Gardinez back in 2022. And then, obviously, Luby beats Tabitha Ricci. And Loop, the Luby loss hasn't aged as well as I think I initially thought it would have. Like, Luby is what? She's dropped... Hasn't she dropped two? Am I am I tripping there? Loopy? Uh, she yeah, dropped two, two right? Yeah. Verna yeah. and Dern. Right, right. <laughs> Which Verna's tough fight for anyone, really. You know, but. it's like I'm supposed to tune out the noise, but this guy's so sharp. It's like now now, <laughs> I, now I feel differently about the fight. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. And now well, well, I mean, it goes to a decision. The judges yeah. see uh, Tabitha Ricci. They're like 10-9. 10-9 yeah. this round, 10-9 that round, and it's probably the way it's going to go. But So let's look uh, at, I want to look at, their striking volume stats here because I think that's going to be important for this type of a fight that can go the distance. So Angela lands 4.86 strikes a minute versus Tabitha 4.94. So around the same number there. But who do you think is more powerful on the feet? I don't think it comes down to that. I think it comes down to range and it comes down to Angela mm -hmm. Hill having better footwork because Tabitha yeah. Ricci struggles. They're, they're striking the defense, both 60%. They're striking, you know, they're they're what they're landing per minute are like the same numbers. Yeah. These girls are very similar statistically. Takedown defense, Angela's at seventy six percent. Tabitha Ricci at seventy seven. These girls like analytically are like carbon copies of each other. Yeah, you know, so that's pretty interesting. I'm a lean Tabitha. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to lean Angela Hill here uh, as my official pick for the show. So let's move on to the main event. This is one guy I cannot bet against. I did it with Paul Craig. He came on the Show Me <laughs> Money podcast. He watched Gilbert <laughs> leg kick me. Oh. He, I cannot bet against Kyle Baraglio. So I'm going to go right to Hayden here and ask Hayden, is laying the chalk worth it here? Because 
Jared Cannonier is a very tricky situation because two fights ago, he looked like he could be champ. Yep. He beat the brakes out of Marvin Vittori, and that yep. was one of the best performances I've ever seen. The closest guy, in my opinion, to ever finish or come close to finishing Marvin Vittori. I think there was an argument that that fight could have been stopped at one point. It was that much damage being taken. Um, but obviously Vittori's known for his chin and 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 he's very good at at and he's very good durability. But then that was kind of like fool's gold because it tricked me in the betting Jared Cannonier in his next fight. And man, that did not go well. Now you can say it was early stoppage, which I believe it was, but at the same time, you know, Cannonier, you know, wasn't really winning that fight. It was close. It was close. I mean, he's outstruck 82 to 64. And just to interject real quick, yeah. I think that early stoppage screwed Nasruddini Mava more because I think he was about to have a nice finish, if I'm yeah. being honest with you. Exactly. No, that's yeah. a great point. Because everyone that everyone <laughs> that that kind of shit on me when I said it was an early stoppage was like, oh, you're biased. I was like, I was like, let me explain something to you. I'm not saying Cannonier was going to win the fight. I just wanted to see it play out. Exactly. Yeah. Part of me was like Cannonier was getting his feet back. Other part of me is like what you just said, like Imovov should be entitled to get a, a nice knockout yeah. finish. We all know how much that stuff matters. Yes. Like maybe Imovov is fighting at a bigger scale coming up next. Yeah. Um, so it's very important. But I'm going to go to Hayden here and say, what are you liking? Well, actually, I have a, had a bet on Imovov by KO in that fight. Yeah. And I still think it was an early stoppage. Yeah. And I think this line is absolutely recency bias hmm. because – what has Bohalio done in the UFC? Beaten Paul Craig? Yeah. And all respect to, to Paul Craig. I love me some Paul Craig, but... You're right. People be getting knocked... Not knocking out Paul and Craig. So, <laughs> so, so like, right. I, I don't know, I'll, man. I'll push back a little bit there. So, you know, Mikel Ozechuk, solid. What's his Armin, UFC record? Armin Petrosian has beaten some guys. Petrosian, that was like his eighth professional Armin Petrosian fight. beat Christian Leroy Duncan, beat Gregory Rodriguez, beat his eighth Dobson. professional fight. It wasn't even anything. I know, but I'm just saying he's, you're right, he hasn't bought, he hasn't beat like top, top he's level winning. guys. But. He's winning, but he's not really winning in like yeah. impressive fashion. He's going to a decision a lot. You yeah. know, subbing That's Ola Shechek, he's been subbed like eight times. Yeah. Uh, knocking out Paul Craig, he's been KO'd like eight times. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, I don't really know how to be impressed by Bahalio. He's winning. And I think he's a good fighter. Not saying he can't win here, but as a minus two twenty five favorite, I'm like, you know, Cannoneer, a fight before the Imovov fight. We were saying he was in the best fight or best shape of his life, coming off the best performance of his life. Before that, before the Vittori fight, he beat Strickland, who then became champion. So it's like, you know, I don't, I don't really see why Cannoneer should be this big of an underdog. Um, but he is what 40, 41. And that's the yeah. reason why I faded him his last fight, and it worked out. But at this point, he's a much bigger dog against uh, Bahalio, and I think Imovov is much better than than Bahalio. So I don't know. I, I'm I'm really leaning towards the dog here. One that you I want to watch. Imovov is much better than Bahalio. I do. Yeah, I think Imovov. Wow, has much better striking, um, and I think his takedown game is solid. It's Bahalio. I, I watched like the Muradov fight today. And Bahalio's getting taken down by Muradov. Um, he's getting reversed by Muradov. And Muradov's a guy that got cut from the UFC, not a grappler whatsoever. And I see similar things where Cannoneer, if he gets taken down, he can get back up on the yeah. feet, Cannoneer. As long as Cannoneer doesn't crumble from the punches from Bahalio, which I don't really see that happening because I don't think Bahalio has the greatest <clears throat> knockout power, I think he's definitely live uh, to win a decision because he's got more five-round experience as well. And Bahalio doesn't. Yeah, I, I agree with that analysis. I'll be really interested to see where the line goes. You know, for me with Cannoneer, he finally did look 40 against Imabov. I hate to say it, you know, for yeah. me, like I did see a little bit of that, but you know, he's fought everyone 10 and seven in the UFC. He's four of four of those seven losses, all to former UFC champions. And to me, when Jared Cannoneer makes that walk to the fucking apex on Saturday night, I just think that the I, the veteran experience, and I'm rooting for the guy. So for me, I can't ignore it. Yeah. I'm interested to see where the line goes, though, because I see it here. It seems like some money's come in on Cannoneer a little bit, whereas earlier in the day, I think I saw the line a little bit. I had it earlier, Bohalio minus 218, Cannoneer plus 180. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Now? It's yeah, it's around that. that. Okay, so well, I'll see where it goes though. But if it, if yeah. it, if, you know, if, if if that if the line starts to come down the other way, that could flip it. Yeah. The, the so line I've seen influences some here. books have. Uh, Kyo at like minus 245 to 250 already, which yeah. is, I think, the direction it's going to go. I think people are looking at like, oh, it's a fighting nerds guy. Cannonier didn't look great his last fight. I think it'll continue to climb that way. And I agree with Hayden. I think there's a, 
potential value spot on Cannoneer, but I just think I can't I can't fight I can't fade the the fight inerts. I think Kyo by decision might be a play here. Cannoneer is super durable historically. Um, I go back and look at like the Derek Brunson fight. You know, Derek Brunson was like not ragged on him in round one, but three takedowns hmm. in round one. Like I th- I think that Kyo can. You know, I think he's a guy that can be super good at using his striking to then time the takedowns. And I think that he, I think he's going to look big next to Cannonier. Like Cannonier is real physical, but I think Kai is going to be overwhelmingly bigger in pure size. Um, and I think he can win rounds with some control time and just you know a little bit of ground and pound here up against the cage. Like I just think he can win rounds. And I think fighting nerds and they'll have, they'll have a great game plan for this fight. So. I'm going to say Kaya wins three rounds to two on a de- unanimous decision is my prediction. And Hayden, that's definitely like to your point, like this will be, this is a good fight for Bohalia to prove himself to you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we can't discount that Cannoneers coming back after what, two months. I know. Last it's, fight. Yeah. Oh, so oh. maybe that's baked into the line <laughs> as well. That's but, a great point. You know. I think it is. So, all right, let's build a show parlay. So right now in the description, guys, if you're not signed up with Fliff, Go sign up right now. Support the show. Support our sponsor. They are a sweepstakes sports book, and you can get action on these fights almost anywhere in the United States right now. So go use the description in the bio. Let's build a lay here. I'm going to go to the hot hand first in Hayden for leg number one. So, Hayden, remember, this show parlay is supposed to be three legs total that we think are absolutely not going to lose. So we're trying to stay away from huge dogs or long shots. but I'm going to go to you first and tell me what you're thinking. It could be on the prelims or the main card. Could we do over-unders? Absolutely. Okay. J- Jason slant, uh, smacked on an under last week. I'm going to take the under two and a half in the Borshev and Lontop fight. Ooh. What's, think what's that number uh, ballpark? I have no idea. <laughs> Let's take a look. I have no idea. Let's take a look. I don't know where it's posted yet, but that fight should be violence on the feet. I don't think either guy's going to shoot a takedown. And Borshev yeah. is nasty with his kickboxing, but he also hey. has a suspect chin. He also got outstruck by my boy Chase Hooper, yeah. Yeah. 62 to yeah, 2, Chase. bro. You're getting dropped by Chase Hooper, man. I don't know if I could trust your That's chin. That's one of those you know? things where like, you're so worried about the takedown that you get slept on the feet, you know? Don't talk about Mr. Hands like that. I'm telling you. I'm <laughs> telling you. Dude. But no, I've known this kid since he was a kid. And I'm telling you, the physical <laughs> transformation. Look out for my boy, Chase Super. Bro, you go oh, watch, I love go Chase watch, go watch Bilal Muhammad's fight against Damian Maya and watch his striking, you know, because yeah. that was when I first noticed. I was like, okay, bully. Like, okay, this is some real crispy striking here. No, yeah. I just think some of these guys who may be, certainly Chase Hooper is a skilled grappler, but yeah. I'm telling you, man, I- yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'll ever get over the the Steve Garcia fight when <laughs> I don't think I'll ever. Jason, I don't know if you if you if you saw it was a while back what I had in the Chase Hooper fight, but Hayden remembers. I had Chase <laughs> Hooper by knockout at ten to ten or twelve to one. The whole world laughed at me. This dude outstrikes Slava Claw yeah. sixty two to two, and the ref doesn't stop the fight. Shout Slava Claw has a fucking bump on his head that's about to explode. And the ref doesn't stop the fight. And then he turns over, gives his back, and gets subbed. It was a Darce choke, I think, actually. But, man, that was one of the (laughs) worst beats of my UFC career outside of the Pollyanna Viana. um, Jillian. Jillian Jillian Robertson fight where I had the the submission. Oh, I remember that. That was the last leg of my parlay. So, all right. We're going under two and a half rounds. Hayden is getting minus 120 on that. I I love love that. that number. I love that. So, let's ride that with leg number one. We're going to Jason next, unless you need a minute and want me to go. You know, I I'm trying to tune out the noise, and I'm gonna, and yeah. so I'm gonna go against Hayden, even though I think he's smarter than me. I'm not. I'm not gonna. You know, I came in here with a pick, and I have to ride it. So I'm going with Tabitha Ricci. No! It's a pick 'em fight. Were you gonna go Angela Hill? I can't. No, no, I can't. No. I'm going Tabitha Ricci, but I'll say it's a little bit of an opposite play. And for me, it's uh, you know, I I said to Scott Wetzel, this guy I was talking about this the other night. This guy used to. I think it was on Yahoo, but he has a website called Opposite Picks. He'd go through this whole uh, a game and lay out why he likes one side, and he'd be like, no, I'm going the other way. So there's a little <laughs> yeah. bit of that. But for me, no, I when I see a fighter sort of on the rise, and with yeah. respect to Angela Hill, I your points are all very well taken, but Tabitha Ricci, second leg, because I'm in the All right, I'll, I'll, I won't do that fight then. I'm going to go to I'm gonna go to the GM3 fight here, and I'm going to look at this total first. 
We didn't oh give any love God, to the, uh, the Ultimate Fighter fights, man. Dang. Over one and a half? That's right. What am I missing here, Hayden? What? Over one and a half in the GM3 fights, minus 125. Just look at how GM3 loses, man. And that'll yeah. probably tell you. And considering mm. he's the underdog. Right. Um, um, but he has been starched early in his career, so you've got to think he's going to be at least somewhat prepared to make right. that not happen. That's, that's what I'm, I'm trust. Yeah, I'm trusting the gut here. I'm going over one and a half. So let's take a look at this parlay. We have to recap. <laughs> we have the over one and a half. <laughs> God, yeah, but, Hamzat starts him. I know. I know. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, so we have a three-leg <laughs> parlay. This is on the Fliff app. If you use our code show me or the link in the description, you can get some free coin to get some action with. Leg, leg number one, under two and a half rounds in the Slava Klaus fight. Leg number two, Jason is going with Tabitha Ricci on the money line. Leg number three, over one and a half rounds, Edmund versus GM3. You put those legs together, 100 is going to return you 516 in net profit, a total payout of $616. Let's go, boys. We got to bounce back after last week. I think that we're going to do it. I, I don't know. I'm, I know. I'm scared I know. on the tab with the Ricci. But a bit Are of you coin sure? I mean, I could give you something else. No, no, I don't want to. I, I can give you something it. else, you know? I'll let Hayden decide. On what? what Should want? he stick with Ricci or add a different leg? Oh, he can keep it. Yeah. All right, let's keep it. Let's keep I it. Mean, I, right. I, think I don't want to be the reason you change it and then it would have won and that loss, you know? Oh, yeah. That would suck. You got to respect the man's pick. You yeah, know? yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, and it could end up being a plus money. You know, it could end up being a dollar, right? Yeah. You think yeah. the money's Right now, out. it's a pick on the flip app. So that's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. I mean, look, you made a good point. She's won five or last six. She's younger. And it's kind of a sell spot for Angela because she looked so good her last fight. Yeah. And like, I love Angela Hill. But yeah. when I see Tabitha Ricci with this kid, Callum Walsh, and maybe it's recency bias. Maybe it's because I've spent a lot of time around yeah. them. But it's like dudes traveling the world trying to be Dana has backed him like crazy. And I just oh, think yeah. that proximity there. And I don't yeah. know. I like the younger fighter. And she's a specimen in the gym. No doubt. She's like a workhorse. And your yeah. point's well taken too, that the power might not come into play, but if it does, yeah. I do think she's got more you think pop. She, yeah. I do. Angela's got like really, I mean, it says they have the same striking volume, but Angela just looks like the eye test. Like she throws a lot of volume out there. So, but yeah, that should be a great fight. So we'll see what happens. So I'm a fill in for money. Moicano here. Like and subscribe to the episode. Once we hit 50K subs, we're going to be flying out fans to South Florida to spar with Moicano and Gilbert. Guys, we need to hit this number by the France card, okay? That way we have Gilbert's fight in a couple weeks, and we have Moicano's in about a month, whatever the date is. What's the date? The 20th? 28th. We have Moicano's in Moicano, five right? weeks. So within six weeks, we need to be at 50K subs. So that way we can fly some fans out to South Florida and they can spar with Gilbert and Moicano. So please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and then copy and paste this link and send it to your group chat of friends that all watch MMA. Send them the Show Me the Money Pot. It's on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube. We will see you guys next week. I believe Gilbert and Moicano will be back, but there's no telling, so I'm not going to make any promises. So <laughs> thank you, Jason. Thank Appreciate you, Hayden, you, for joining the show. We're going to go watch some Contender Series, so we'll see you guys soon. Peace.